subscribe. What is up everybody? Today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to track an image onto a video clip in DaVinci Resolve 16 Fusion specifically. So anyway, let's jump right into it. Alright, so right here this is my documentary about seagulls and crows. Um, so what I want to do is I just want to motion track an image or maybe uh, text onto this seagull's face. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on your clip and let's bring it into Fusion. Okay, so when you first open up Fusion, it can be a little bit scary because it's a lot different than After Effects or many other programs, uh, mostly because it has a node-based structure. So it doesn't have layers. Um, that's kind of the equivalent of what these nodes are. They are like layers um, and also effects and different things. You'll start to learn how it works once you start working with nodes. It's actually pretty easy. But basically how it works is you have a start point, which usually will be your media or some sort of clip, maybe even just a blank background is going to be your starting node. And what you do is it just follows this line down. And every time it hits another node, for example, let's just say there's an effect on that node, it will apply that effect and then move on to the next one, apply the next effect, next effect, until finally it reaches the output which is your final output that will that you will see in the edit page. So, uh, hopefully that explains it just a little bit. We'll uh, go ahead and get into it right here, and hopefully you'll uh, understand it a little bit more better. Um, so, the first thing we want to do is add a tracker node, because we want to track the bird's face. So, if we go ahead and click shift and spacebar at the t same time just tap it it will bring up the search bar and you can go ahead and type in tracker and we'll click enter and it'll bring up a tracker hopefully it should add it into the stream if not you can just uh, drag the arrows and attach it yourself um, but once we have our tracker in here like I said it starts with the media which is the video of our bird and then the next thing it's gonna do is gonna Go ahead and track the bird. So what we want to do here, okay, so with our tracker selected, you'll see here's our attributes for a tracker. We don't want to mess with anything right now. The big thing is our actual tracker box right here. So don't grab the center or anything because that will actually mess with the size of your tracker. Uh, what you want to do is grab this little dot up in the corner here, and that will allow you to move your tracker. So first you need to find a thing you actually want to track. Um, mostly what you want to do is find something with high contrast. You don't want to find something with uh, that stands out or had a, a super weird design. You want something that is very noticeable. For example, this round eyeball, the eyeball on the seagull, it's, uh, you can see it's uh, black on a white background and it's round, it's circular, it's very easy to distinguish for the computer. So if we go ahead and position our tracker right on top of that, that is a great place to start tracking. So what the solid rectangle is, is basically what the actual computer is searching for. So anything within that cube, it's going to be searching for each frame. Now, when you drag your mouse over, you'll see the dashed line. Basically, this is the search area. So each frame, basically within this area, it will search for that image that's inside the solid area. So the thing is, if the bird moves from one frame here to all the way over here the next frame, it's not gonna be able to detect it because it moved too fast and the tracker is only looking in this area. If it moved all the way over here, the tracker area would have to be all the way over here for it to actually detect. So anyways, that's looking pretty good. If you do want to adjust those, uh, you can actually adjust those more precisely right here. So here you can adjust the width, the height of both boxes, um, including the dashed lines. But we'll just keep it how it is for right now. So what you want to do once you have this is probably go ahead and just click play and track forward from current time. So, or you could track the whole thing forward. So we're going to go ahead and track the whole thing. So if we click that, it will start analyzing and it might take a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part. All right. So it's just finished tracking. And as you can see, if I go ahead and play, 
it follows the eye almost perfectly. It uh, it jumps around just a little bit. That could be simply because of what I selected to track. So ideally, it shouldn't ever jump around, hopefully, because you could hopefully find a really good contrasting point in your video to actually track. So once we have that tracked, how do we actually add an image to it? So basically what we want to do is make sure here in our tracker tab, make sure your node is selected. We want to go to the operation here and make sure this is on match move. Uh, that is basically just a single track point and it'll make it so we can actually merge the foreground of whatever is attached to the tracker to our actual image. For example, we'll put an image on here. So well, let's say uh, let's say we'll go ahead and uh, use a Minecraft sheep head and put that on top of the seagull's head. Okay, so with your media right here, what we want to do is go ahead and drag its output onto the foreground, which is the green of the tracker. Now, as soon as you do that, it will pop into the scene, and that's perfect. Um, basically, however, we want to move it, though. So to do that, go ahead and select your media. That way, if we bring up the search box, shift, spacebar, it we can go ahead and add a transform. Trans ew, transform. So if we add a transform, now if you click on the transform, you'll notice the arrows will come up so you can actually move this. So let's go ahead and move this over here. Go into the attributes of the transform and just uh, bring down the size. And what am I making? So if I go ahead and press spacebar, you can see that it is tracked onto my bird. And it is perfect in every way. What is this? So yeah, if you have any problems, you most likely want to just try to retrack the whole thing. Um, the best thing is to find that perfect track point where uh, it'll track almost perfectly the whole clip. Uh, that really helps a lot um, because the first thing you select might not track perfectly well. You want to try that to find that perfect spot where it has nice contrast and the computer can really follow it throughout the whole video. So if it doesn't work the first time, go ahead and try it out the second time and then you can mess with it a little bit. And just for those of you that are still learning how to use nodes, just to uh, show you the flow. So basically right here we start with our media. All right, This is our media node. That is the sheep head. <laughs> Um, and then basically from there, this arrow flows down to the transform. So the transform actually moves it from the center to the seagull head over here. So actually, if we didn't have the transform, it would be in the center. And if we actually play it, it would just be attached to this wood piece right here. So we want to keep that attached to the seagull. Then the actual tra then from the transform it goes to the tracker and the tracker will actually place the transform which has already been moved um, onto the actual scene itself because it's been tracked. So that's how the actual head is stuck to the bird. And then from here this is our media in. So what our tracker is doing it is merging the media which is our footage with the sheep head it is merging the sheep head onto the foreground of it so this is like our background and then this is our foreground and it's on top of our footage and then that goes to our output which is the final thing that we see right here so i hope you guys found this helpful it's super simple uh if you need a more detailed uh, tracker tutorial, let me know and I'll try to make one. I try to keep these really short and simple. Uh, that way you can just look at these in a matter of minutes and try to get started on something. So I hope you like that a lot and uh, go make stuff that isn't as stupid as mine.